We are going to have the same setup as the previous video. Here A is an m by n matrix with full row rank. B is an m vector, C is an n vector. And the problem we are looking at is minimize C transpose x subject to ax equal to b, x greater than or equal to 0. And we are given an m element subset of the index sets of the variables. And we are told that the submatrix of A with columns indexed by B has an inverse. And suppose that x star is a feasible solution such that xj star is positive for all j in B and 0 everywhere else. In the previous video, we saw how we can tell whether or not x star is optimal. x star is optimal if and only if there is a feasible solution y star to the dual, such that x star and y star satisfy the complementary slackness conditions. And the complementary slackness conditions will require uh, such y star to satisfy the following inequalities with equality. Okay, so let me just write this down. So x star is optimal if and only if there exists y star feasible to d such that uh, y star transpose a b equals c sub b transpose and since the inverse of a sub b exists y star is uniquely determined so since y star is uniquely determined all we need to check is whether or not the y star given by so this is the same as saying that y star given by this satisfy these inequalities okay so x star is optimal if and only if when y star is given by this it satisfy these inequalities so what happens if this y star violates some of these things and this is what we're going to look at next suppose that y star transpose a k is bigger than c k for some k not in b so what we'll do is we'll look at this system instead so notice that when we plug in x star here z will be equal to the objective function value of x star now uh, let's rewrite things a bit. So I'm going to write this as follows. So I'm going to break things into two. Those indexed by B and those indexed by N. So N is the set of indices not in B. Okay, and so I can write this as now what I can do is I can write this as the following so I multiply both sides by a b inverse so let me call this 2 and this 1 and if we multiply 2 on the left by c sub b transpose we get the following okay so this is true and now I add this to 1 to obtain an equivalent system and this is what we get so I'm going to bring this over now what you want to notice is this is simply same as y star transpose so this is going to be minus y star transpose a n x n plus c n transpose x n and here I have x b plus a b inverse a n x n equal to and finally simplifying this I get 
So I'm missing something here. I'm missing a Y transpose B here. And this is also plus Y star transpose B. So uh, I want you to stare at this for a moment. Clearly, if I plug in X star here, Z will be equal to Y star transpose B. And that is the current objective function value. Now, remember that we're assuming that there is a Y star transpose AK bigger than CK. So if I look at this here, say I increase XK without increasing any other X value indexed by elements in N, then I can actually reduce the Z value. Now, but here I must make adjustment in this system of equations, so I still maintain this equality. Right? The key is, if I can do that, if I can increase xk while maintaining a solution to this, I will be able to find a solution that lowers the value of z. So I can find a feasible solution with a lower objective function value. Now if I increase xk, what do I need? So say xk is set to t for some positive t. Well, what we need is we need a new solution, say x prime, such that x prime b is x star b. And x prime is 0 everywhere else. Clearly, if I plug in x prime into x here, uh, this system of equations will be satisfied. And the objective function value here will be less than the objective function rate of x star, provided that t is positive. What we also need is that this is non-negative, right? In order for x prime to be feasible, we need this to be non-negative. Now notice the following. If a sub b inverse a k is non-positive, then t can be increased indefinitely. And what does this mean? That means that the problem is unbounded. So this is where we can recognize unboundedness. If we compute this for some k such that y star transpose a k is bigger than c k, and this is non-positive everywhere, then we can say that p is unbounded. Because as I increase t, the objective function value is going to decrease without bounds. Now, if it is not the case, then what's going to happen is, for some large enough t, one of these x star indexed by b is going to be reduced to 0. And so we're going to have an x prime that has at most n positive entries because what well, xk prime will be positive. We are increasing t, right? And at some point, one of the entries in x sub b star is going to be reduced to zero. So it could be multiple of them, but at least one of them will be turned into zero. So x prime will have no more than m positive entries. And if you look at columns of A corresponding to positive entries in x prime, they are also linear independent. So what we end up with is we still have a basic feasible solution x prime. Now, of course, the complication here is that we might end up with x prime having fewer than m positive components. And that's, again, a situation that we said we will take care of later on. But for now, we know how to detect unboundedness. To summarize, if we have this condition here, and if we compute a, b inverse a, k, and it turns out to be non-positive, then the problem is unbounded. Otherwise, we have found another basic feasible solution that has a better objective function value than x star.